Hi guys and welcome back to another Q&A. We're well into our summer here in Ontario, Muskoka, Canada. I've been extremely busy because I've been getting a lot of lawn tractors, lawn mowers and all kinds of equipment for this season and I want to apologize if I cannot get to all the questions that are being asked. I'm just simply too busy to do that. However, if you're watching the videos and you read the comments, if you can answer somebody's questions, go right ahead and do that. It will help me. You can also do that on my Instagram page and my Facebook page as well. And by the way, if you want to go to my Instagram page and my Facebook page and Twitter, all the links are under the video today. And make sure to follow me on all those social media pages because you will see things there that you do not see in the videos. Now I'm going to get started right into the first question. The first question is one that I often get in the shop here and that is, why does my grass trimmer have a hard time to spin the head right after I replace the string on it. Well the most common problem to this that I see that people do is that they installed string that's way too big for their trimmer. For example here guys this FS38 grass trimmer has a .080 string installed. This is the correct size of string for this trimmer. As you can see it's not that big. For example people will install string like this that is way too big. This one's .095 thousandths of an inch. The one on the trimmer is 0 .080 and as you can see this string is much bigger than the green one on the FS38. Now you might get away with it but you will lack power and also another big problem is that if you use string that's too big it may not come out of the head properly when you bump it. And for example if you use that big orange string I just showed you in a small weed eater like this that uses a 0 .065 string you will really notice the downgrade in power. And again guys I really see this often in my shop and I want to tell you guys that when you do restring your trimmer make sure you're using the proper size of string. And it's really important that you install the string in the correct sequence or else it will get all tangled up and it will not come out of the head as well. Now a quick tip I want to share with you guys today is if your steel grass trimmer does not want to rev up you may have a clogged spark arrestor. Just in the last week I've cleaned about five spark arresters from steel grass trimmers. Here's one that is clean. What happens is they get all clogged up from the carbon created by the oil in the gas and then the exhaust cannot come out and therefore the engine will not rev up or even start. All you need is a 15 millimeter socket to remove the spark arrestor. Heat it up with the torch, clean it with a wire brush and reinstall it. I do have a video that shows how to do this and the link is under the video today. Now another question I often get about spark arresters is do I need it for my trimmer to run? Well my answer to that is no. The reason they're installed is to prevent fires from happening if ever sparks came out of the muffler. And they do make the trimmer a little less louder as well. So if you remove the spark arrestor and you don't reinstall it, it will not affect the performance of your grass trimmer. But again, in some states or provinces, it is required to put them back on. And if you're a technician, you should always put it back on just to prevent any liabilities. And another very common question is, how can I prevent my spark arrestor from getting clogged in the first place? Well, the way you can do that is to make sure that you use the proper fuel and oil mixture in your unit. Using Steel's Motomix premixed fuel may help as well. This fuel will also help your carburetor from getting clogged up as well. And sometimes I'll put the little sticker here on the unit just to remind people that if they want to avoid problems that this is the fuel to get. And also you could take off your spark arrestor every year and just clean it as preventive maintenance as well. Here's my Milwaukee Fuel M12 Impact Driver. You guys saw pics of this on my Facebook page and Instagram page. I was showing you guys the problem here and that the warranty was not going to cover this. I did get contacted by Milwaukee. I'm waiting on them. They told me that they will be sending me a new unit. I'm going to make sure to keep you guys posted on that and I will be making a video to give you my experience on the whole thing. Now another question I often get asked by people in the shop and on YouTube is how do I fix a tire that is flat on my lawn tractor permanently? Well, my best solution to that is remove the tire and install a good quality tube in there and then you won't have to worry about your tires going flat again. I'm not a big fan of putting stuff inside the tire to seal the bead. Personally, I just prefer to install a new tube, 
and then I'm sure that people are not going to come back and say the tire is leaking again. And if you can't do this by yourself, just take the wheel off and take it to a tire shop. They've got really good equipment. They can get your tire on there pretty fast and it's usually under 30 bucks. Another question I've been getting lately is how do I know if the metering diaphragm in my two cycle carburetor needs to be replaced? Well, if it needs to be replaced, you won't be able to get your equipment to run properly. You will need to adjust the carburetor constantly and even after adjusting it, it still won't run properly. And that's because it's going to have a hard time metering the fuel or even getting the fuel through the carburetor. And also when you take the metering diaphragm out of your carburetor, you're going to see that it's all full of wrinkles. It may be hard. It's going to be harder than usual. This one's stiffer than what it should be. When I first took it out of the carb, it was really stiff. It softened up a bit since, but now at this point it's all wrinkled and I could not get the equipment to run properly with this metering diaphragm. Now, if you do replace the metering diaphragm, I do recommend that you replace the whole carburetor kit as well. Now, a lot of time I get people in the shop and they're asking me, should I replace my blades or not? Well, one sign that you should is if you see the ends of your blades here are not squared. This one's totally worn out. They need to be replaced. If you look at a brand new blade here, you can see that it's square and you can see quite a contrast there. If you keep using blades like this, it's really hard to cut your grass. And by not having your blade square at the end and the lift properly there, it's going to be hard to push that cut grass out of the deck. And also if you have old blades like this, you're going to notice that your grass will not be cut properly. You will have to drive back over it because it will leave a line of grass in between the two blades. Now another common question I've been getting recently from people who work on their own stuff is what's a good starting point for the adjusting screws on a two cycle carburetor? Well, my best advice is start at two turns out. So what you would do first is screw the two screws in all the way. That would be the L and the H screw. And usually you can see the letter L and the letter H under the screws. You can leave the idle adjustment screw alone for now. So turn them all the way in and then count two turns out. You probably are going to have to tweak the carburetor after that. And usually I end up turning them just in a bit more, like maybe another half a turn until the engine runs right. And once your engine runs properly, then you can adjust your idle screw. This one here does not affect the air or fuel mixture of the carburetor. Only these two over here. And you may also have to pop these caps off here so that you're able to turn the screws in all the way. These are limiters. They do prevent the screws from getting turned out or in too much. So you can pop them out with a screwdriver or a pair of pliers. However, you might break these caps when you remove them, but most of the time that doesn't really matter. The screws will not unset themselves even if the caps are not reinstalled. What you can do as well is go purchase new caps if you want to. So that'll be it for today's Q&A guys. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great weekend and also have yourselves a great summer.